So in this series, we're going to be designing your very own dream house. And I'm taking you throughout this entire process. We're going to learn some really essential architecture and design software. We're going to be learning things like AI, hand drawing, Rhino, and a little bit of Unreal Engine at the end. So by the end of this process, you'll be able to essentially create your own concept design in Rhino, then bring it to Unreal Engine and bring it to life. And I'll be showing you how to create some facade designs and planning your house and everything. So in this first episode, I'm going to show you how to come up with the initial planning stage and get some inspiration. When you're first coming up with concepts of your design, there's a few things I like to do to come up with some inspiration. Now, actually, this first one is one of the best, and it's finding houses in real life. This is actually, funnily enough, a picture that my mum sent back in New Zealand. Uh, now, obviously, this building is um, very budget, uh, but I do really like the overall concept of this. You know, obviously uh, we've had to cut costs on the facade and a window, or maybe it's that part of the design, but I do really like this idea of having this one, not actually sure what you call it, but this kind of um, cross column, I'll just call it, where you've got the load bearing coming down from two parts of the column into one part on the ground and parking your cars on either side. So this overall idea is what I'm gonna be using. We're gonna design a house similar to this kind of design but I'm gonna do an actual proper architectural facade and use some of uh, the facades I've worked on on my work. I'll use that as inspiration for this. So I'm gonna cross this with something like Mies van der Rohe. Now, if you go to Pinterest, this is another essential thing that I like to come up with for inspiration. This is going to Pinterest and searching for things. If you're into design and architecture, you probably already know this, but I'm gonna go with the Mies van der Rohe style house but maybe with a bit more of an articulated facade. Uh, you're not quite as minimalistic as Mies van der Rohe. Actually quite funny, after using AI for so long, I can see uh, in our last video where we did those Mies van der Rohe renders, I can see which exactly which parts that AI took out of these. Uh, for example, like this image. Um, in our next video or after that, I'm gonna do some hand sketches maybe and come up with the actual design. But for now, we're just gonna focus on the planning stage. We'll get that set up in Rhino in a minute. You can also use AI to come up with um, some inspiration. So I just went into mid journey. I have a bit of an idea. I wanna do a floating one story house in the style of Mies van der Rohe with two cars parked underneath. You know, sandstone facade, timber architecture, some simple prompts just to get us started. You know, we don't wanna overcomplicate it right at the beginning. So our house will just be a simple box shape, you know, no crazy curved roofs or crazy features. We want to keep this like a kind of almost tangible uh, result at the end. But this kind of um, mood and style is what I'm wanting. It's something like the top right, but probably more sandstone rather than timber. But those are some ways you can come up with inspiration. So now we're going to jump into Rhino. So once we're in Rhino, we're going to go ahead and set up just a simple plan. Now you can use Archicad, Revit, whatever you want, but for simplicity, I'm gonna be doing this whole thing all in Rhino. First of all, I'm just gonna use a car for reference for scale, and then we'll kind of uh, build around that. So just a regular car is about 2.69 by 1.75. So we'll go into Rhino, we'll use our rectangle tool, and we'll go, I believe this is in millimeters, so it'll be 2690 by 1750. We'll just make sure our document is set up in millimeters. So we go to File, Properties, go to Units, and it is in millimeters. For the sake of this, I'll just make the car a little bit longer and narrower. And we'll just move this off this grid so we can kind of see what we're doing. So we'll go ahead onto our layers, change layer one, or we'll rename it to, I'll just name it Planning Lines. So there's a car here. So I'm envisioning having two cars parked on either side with this kind of V column in the middle and then a house above it. It's not going to be overly massive or anything. So for scale, we'll just put where the cars, I think they'll go probably like around there. We can type in distance and the approximate distance of our building will be around 20 meters long. And go ahead on the right here and just change our layer color to black. So for now, we'll just go 20 by 20. So it's 20. This is looking a little bit big, actually, because I really want the cars to kind of almost be a focus of it as well. So we're going to make it a bit smaller. Maybe we'll go 
12.5. Yeah, this is quite a hard process to figure this out, but I think 12.5 is good because an average bedroom size is uh, two by four. Oh, sorry, that's actually a bit small. We'll go three by four. So that's kind of like an average bedroom size. Actually, now that I know architecture, we'll just calculate the general floor area. So 12.5 times two. So you got 25,000 square meters. No. No, sorry, that's... <laughs> uh, I'm so used to working on larger, huge skyscrapers, 50 stories and stuff. I was like, a small house with 25,000 meters, that's a lot. No, this is uh, 25 meters. So it is. A, this is going to be a very small house, but we can probably extend it. To 12.5 wide. And since we've got one V column going through the middle here, it can be a little bit longer. So we'll go 12.5 by, I mean, I don't want it to be too big, but we can probably just go, say by 18. Well, it's a bit big. We'll just go by 15. And so now, there we go. There's, we've got these two cars that will park here. And then you've got the rest of the house behind it. So now we're going to plan out our bedrooms that will go in. So when you're planning a small house like this, uh, one thing I really like to do is get a piece of paper or a notepad. I will draw this on paper and then show you, but essentially what we're going to do, uh, I'll draw it and I'll show you what I've done. All right, so what I've done here, um, I don't know, the bubble diagram can sometimes be a bit useless. Depends on how big your project is, but since mine is quite small, not sure how useful the bubble diagram is, but essentially you just want to write down all of the rooms you'll be putting in so you can keep it in your mind as you are planning this out. We want two bedrooms, so we'll go ahead and use the rectangle tool. We'll make the bedrooms, we'll say three by four, not too big. And then they'll have their own ensuite bathrooms, so that will be three by two. So you highlight them, hold down Alt, and then use Gumball to drag, and that creates a copy. Um, there really is no secret to planning. I mean, please just do not use those AI room planners. You're much better off at the moment just making them yourselves. Uh, just looking at the scale of this, we probably have a bit more room to make slightly larger bedrooms. So we can probably go four by five. Let's go move and scale 1D. So for now, we'll just move these bedrooms to be at the back. Really simple planning layout. The bathrooms at the front. Um, actually, we probably want the bathrooms to be at the back. So it's easier for plumbing and stuff because <laughs> I don't want to think too hard about this, but if we want this floating effect, then all of your bathroom and plumbing and water dump pipes and stuff will have to go inside of this column. So we want to try and keep those kind of services as central as you can. You just want to think about that when you're planning houses like this, where the plumbing is going to go, where the services, I mean, I'm not too familiar with this kind of low scale residential actually, but when you're planning uh, tall buildings and skyscrapers, you want all of your services to be located as close to the core as they can, or somewhere where all the pipes can run down the building. But in this case, this is one story, so it's not that not that big of a deal. I have a feeling we've made this a little bit too big, but that's all right. You know, you can do a design at your own process or follow along if you like. I'll just go ahead and move these out the way. So we've got also a kitchen. Kitchen, we'll make an open plan, so the kitchen and living room are kind of together. So we'll just make that a bench top. So to say there's our kitchen there. And yeah, we'll leave this long access way here and we'll make this kind of like the exit room or back room there. So your bedrooms will be here on left and right. Your kitchen here and we'll make this a big open plan living room. We also need a laundry so we'll just put the laundry like here. Or maybe you probably don't want the laundry right next to the living room so we'll probably move this bedroom down 
check the distance here. About one meter is enough for a door. Let's go a little bit more. So that will be our big laundry, our little room to exit, and then another bedroom there. Let's move our bedroom next to that laundry. And then maybe next to the bedroom, we'll put the study room on the right. And now, there you go. So that's a really simple. So now we're going to put in our walls. I'll go and make a new layer and just call it walls. We're going to use a rectangle template for this. So our external walls around here for our facade, we'll say, we'll leave about 500 mils for a facade articulation. And then our internal walls, we'll make them about 100. So you've got these two squares here you can use for your walls. What I'll do is go ahead and go move. And then just put these around our different rooms and using that scale tool. It is a little bit difficult to do this on Rhino. It's not really made for planning like this, but this is the a decent way to do it. Just by using the move and the scale tool. See, so we go ahead and make our walls like this. Let's use alt drag, move. I'll go ahead and finish this up uh, and then I'll show you what it looks like at the end. All right, so this is what it looks like once we've placed all of our walls around and we've got our facade articulation zone. We're gonna go ahead and turn off those planning lines, hit lock or just hide it. And then we're gonna select all of this and then type in trim. Now what this does is removes these inner lines so we can click on this or just click and drag and it will delete those inner lines there. We wanna go around and do this just for all of the internal walls. So this all becomes one wall. So you see how it's uh, turning it all into like one object essentially? Okay, that's a bit broken there, but we can just go ahead and fix that. And the same for the external facade. Cool, and then this is missing here, so we just go ahead, use a line, and join that up. So now we have our internal walls there. We'll go ahead and make a door. We'll say it's 900 by 100. And we'll make a new layer for this and just call it doors. Go, I click on the object, go right click, change object layer, go to doors. Go ahead and place these around. So bedroom entry will probably be... I'm going to keep that away from the kitchen, so we'll put it over here. And then you'll have your bathroom entry. There you go, so we've put in all of our doors now. Uh, the windows will do that. So I'm gonna do a separate video on facade design by itself. So, but for now, we can kind of, I guess, just mark out where our windows will be. So I'm wanting one large window. This kind of goes along here. We'll do that in the actual facade design, but we imagine two large windows on these walls. That's just to mark out so I can remember where it will be. And actually we'll do the, the entrance will be some stairs coming from the central column down here. But we're going to go ahead on to make a new layer and just call it either structure or column. Now we're not going to go overly in depth with the, um, you know, uh, structural grid and column layout and all this. We won't bother too much with that, but we will be having this one central column in the middle like this. So the approximate size of this, it'll probably be about 1.5. Imagine a column sloping on the side, so that will probably be about 1.8. So imagine the column is sloping on the one side there. And we'll copy this. You can see it snaps to the midpoint. So that, that will be our central column going down the middle. And our two cars will be parked underneath like that. And then that doesn't really leave us much room for that entry that I wanted to do. I think I might make the entrance around the back and have some stairs coming up from here and then going in through here. So we'll need to make sure we keep that in mind when we do our facade. 
Uh, I'm going to do a feature floor where, you could, where this facade here will be glass and then this floor will be glass below it. I could do it for the both sides, but might just keep it for might just keep it for the one side. Um, I'm really not going to go into crazy amounts of detail. You know, this is not a tender stage process. This is literally just a concept design. But I'm pretty happy with how those floor plans come out. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be going over extruding all this and turning this into 3D. So we've got an actual building to look at. Then we'll be making the facade and detailing, and then putting it into Unreal Engine and bringing it to life. I used AI to come up with some inspiration for this. Uh, on my website, I've got full tutorials on AI. Also, I have a much more in-depth series on Rhino for architecture um, on my website, which I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check that out. It really goes into the essential tools in Rhino if you are actually studying architecture or want to properly learn Rhino and all of the ins and outs. I've got a full series there. We make a Mies van der Rohe house. Uh, it's a really exciting series, actually, where you get to make your own Mies van der Rohe Farnsworth house. But I hope this tutorial was helpful and that you kind of got to learn a little bit of the basics of Rhino and that in the next video we're going to be extruding this and bringing it to life. So I hope to see you in the next video.